The logical flow of configuring your smart zone environment has you configuring the controller settings first, then configuring your member access points and WLANs. Assuming that the initial system configuration settings have been made, and prior to configuring your access points and wireless LANs, it's time to think about how this smart zone controller will set, be set up to manage your deployment infrastructure. Once partner domains and subdomains have been created, and you also have administrative access that's been assigned, it would then be time to create zones. Whereas domains define administrative boundaries, zones define the settings that will be applied to the access points. Zones can be created within the system domain, a subdomain, or within a partner domain. Zones can be created according to logical boundaries where you don't want access points operating together. For example, if you wanted to have specific settings such as a country code, or specific WLANs applied to the access points. Maybe you'd like to deploy zones with different firmware in order to support older access point models or test features. When access points successfully register to the controller, they will eventually be placed in an access point group inside a zone within a subdomain. The access points will download the system configuration settings defined within the zone, and the settings will be applied to the access points. Because of this, it is logical then to configure the zone settings prior to having the access points join the zone. On an essentials controller, there's only the system domain. This is the single administrative boundary on your controller. As with high scale, you can create zones. So let's go ahead and now, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate uh, some of the zone features or uh, functionality uh, that we have in the, the virtual smart zone appliance. Uh, again, we're in using high scale, uh, so the look and feel of things will be just slightly different with high scale than it would be essentials. But uh, again, primarily the uh, the interface itself is fairly similar. So I'm from the dashboard. What I'm going to go ahead and do is select on access points, and this is where I get into. I can actually do the domain configuration and also where I do my zone configurations. So. From here, you see that I've already got a domain called HQ. Uh, and then below the system domain, uh, I also have what's called the staging zone. So this is a concept that is uh, for the uh, virtual smart zone high scale in that when I have APs that are trying to connect to the controller, uh, if they have not been registered or have not been uh, fully brought into the environment, they land in the staging zone. Uh, so what happens there is that uh, nothing, those APs that are in that staging zone have no configuration uh, that has been blown down to them from the uh, smart zone controller. Uh, so that's what you're going to see. That's a default zone that comes with high scale. When you use essentials, basically those access points are put into the, the default zone uh, from the system, the, the root system domain. Uh, and again, with the essentials, we don't have the concept of uh, domains other than the system domain on that. So here, if I want to select a, a zone, go ahead and select on uh, HQ, which is the domain I want these zones to uh, be created in. I'm going to create. I'm going to go ahead and create uh, two different zones. That let's say for my access points, I've got access points that are uh, in New York City, and I've got some access points that are in uh, in California. So what I'm going to do here is from the context of HQ on the left-hand side, the HQ domain, I'm going to go ahead and select the green plus sign. What this does is go, allows me to go ahead and create, as you can see there, the default is domain, but what I'm going to want to do is actually create a zone. So I go ahead and select on zone there. And for, uh, for the name, again, this is just a friendly name. I'm going to say... Uh, NYC zone, just to, to make it very simple. Notice that when I uh, scroll down here at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, basically collapse this menu here, just so you have a better understanding of how this is broken into. Uh, we have the New York City zone that we're creating. You've got general options, you've got mesh options, radio, tunnel, syslog, SNMP, and then we have advanced options. Uh, advanced options we'll handle in a different video just uh, because it, there, there's a lot of details and configuration options that are available in that. Uh, so we'll cover that in a different video. But let's go ahead and talk about some of these other options that we have when we're creating a zone. Under the general options, 
Um, there's a couple different pieces on here that, uh, that are fairly important. So we have the access point firmware. Okay, so the default of where the, where this information is coming from, or which code load or firmware level for the APs, it's basically what firmware was brought into the system when you did the configuration of the smart zone. And then once you've done that, if you've done any upgrades or acquired any upgrades of uh, firmware, uh, that will be in this library as well, and will be selectable from there. Another important part is the country code. Um, so the defaults to the United States. Um, what this is going to do is actually change uh, what radio uh, channels are actually being used for the specific APs in that particular zone. So th both of the zones that I'm going to create in this example are in the United States. But what you'll see here is if I scroll down to uh, basically the radio, so I'm going to go to the radio options here. Notice that I've got specific channels that are actually selected uh, as, a, as a default, and that's because I'm, I've selected the United States as uh, my country code. So if I come back up here and I select a different country, let's say I select Taiwan, and then I scroll back down, notice that I actually have different channels that are selected. Notice that the uh, DFS option is no longer there. Um, so it does change the, the specific radio channel options that are available based on a, a country and what's being allowed in those particular countries. So I'm going to go scroll back up. I'm going to go back, back to the United States as the option. Uh, the middle section, not, not so much as important, but if you're wanting to use it, uh, this is where I put in metadata about the location, uh, some description information. And if I wanted to, uh, most likely you probably will want to use the map feature that we have with SmartZone. Uh, we can put, go ahead and put specific latitude and longitude uh, settings so that when uh, you're looking at the map view, you'll actually be able to see uh, visually where those access points are located uh, and what facilities, that type of thing. Um, the other thing that's really important here is the admin, the AP admin login. So what this is going to do is because of this zone, I'm setting these settings, all the access points that join this zone are going to be given this configuration. So one of those things that's being passed to it in the configuration is the login ID and password that'll be used. If, for instance, I wanted to connect to that particular access point uh, using CLI. Um, what I would need is this password to be able to log into that particular uh, access point. Um, I also have here the the virtual smart zone dash D, which is data plane uh, zone affinity profile. So if I was using, uh, let's say I, I needed to do, I wanted some of my wireless traffic to be tunneled uh, across the network to a uh, to another another network, uh, or for whatever reason it's, I'm using a data plane. Uh, I'll be able to make an association with that particular uh, data plane. Um, also, the time zone. So, for instance, uh, this one we're creating here is New York City. So, what I'll go ahead is for, change from the default. I'll change from the defaults. So I'll go ahead and go to a uh, minus five. Let me just find it real quickly. We've got New York here. So, I'll select that. And then we've got the IP mode, again, based on what you uh, selected on the initial configuration of the Smart Zone Controller, which IP uh, addresses that you're doing uh, or using, uh, you'll have options there. Okay, so that's it pretty much in the, the top section, which is our, our general options. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. Um, we then go into uh, what are referred to as mesh, mesh options. So uh, if I wanted to turn on mesh for this particular zone, uh, I would go ahead and select this checkbox, which will enable it. And then I've got a mesh name, which is a, a basically a secret SID that's actually used, and then a, then a passphrase or a password for that particular network. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. Uh, then we get down to, go ahead and collapse that, I go ahead down to the radio options. So again, this is specific for uh, the United States country code, in which uh, channels that are actually uh, being used. Now, if, if for whatever reason, if I wanted to not use specific channels, if I knew that uh, other networks or uh, devices were using specific channels, I can just go ahead and select each of those and uncheck or untick those particular channels. 
So the other thing that's, that's fairly important on here is if, if I'm in an area of, of high congestion, especially um, well in an outdoor environment, with our five uh, gigahertz uh, network here, um, I have the ability to use DFS channels uh, if, if it's something that's appropriate for my country code. So if I uh, go ahead and select on <clears throat> that option, you notice that I've got more channels that are uh, used. And this is basically, uh, DFS is, are channels that uh, are implemented to where they do not interfere with uh, radar communications uh, in an outdoor environment. Okay, so most instances you most likely will not use uh, this option, but just know that it is an option there. Uh, you should be fine, unless you're in a very heavily congested area uh, with other networks, uh, you, you most likely do not need to turn that on. Um, so just do, do so with caution. If I scroll down a little bit more, I've got uh, the radio options. We've got the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz. Uh, options that I can go ahead and select. So in most instances, you will want to keep the auto settings uh, set for uh, for any of these settings, okay? Um, you do have the option, again, for this zone, so this will take effect on any of the access points that are part of the zone, uh, but you're able to change from uh, the auto setting to a specific um, channel width if, if you're wanting to do that, uh, and specific channels if you're wanting to do that as well. But again, uh, we, we go ahead and recommend that you, you keep that on auto. Uh, and then we also have auto cell sizing, which is basically configuring automatically uh, any uh, power adjustments that should be made in that environment. Um, so if what we're looking to, to not happen is have too much interference between the different channels and making sure that the uh, cells are sized appropriately when it comes to power and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unselect that. Uh, if I wanted to manually change uh, the power, there is a drop down for that and we have the appropriate options for that. Again, this is probably not something that you will mess with unless you're, uh, let's say, testing in, in a very densely populated uh, or Wi-Fi densely populated area. You know, there, there's there are different uh, business scenarios where you would be adjusting the power, but uh, most likely that you'll be using the defaults for this. So if I scroll down to the next section, I've got tunnel tunnel options. So if I'm wanting my wireless traffic to be tunneled to another network, um, I have options here for the different uh, tunnel types. So if I I select here. Uh, the drop down, I've got the the Ruckus GRE. I have um, Soft GRE, which would be uh, basically connecting to a third party uh, point. And then uh, Soft GRE plus IPsec, uh, which is also available configuration for that. Uh, just know that with the Soft GRE options, uh, there are additional licenses that need to be procured uh, for that those different solutions. And then we go ahead and Scroll down a little bit more, we see that we've got syslog options. So if I want to uh, do syslog, um, basically information being sent to a syslog server for this particular, uh, for the APs that are in this particular zone, I go ahead and specify that information. Uh, note that when we did the system configuration for the smart zone controller, uh, we are also uh, basically specifying information there as well. Uh, but for the access points, if you're wanting to have the, the syslog uh, be an option there, uh, we'll have, go ahead and uh, configure it here in the zone configuration. And then also SNMP options, if you're wanting to uh, configure that and basically uh, send information to an SNMP ser server, uh, you have the option to do that as well. So the last option here is advanced options. I'll just go ahead and, and uh, expand it just so you can kind of see, but there are some other uh, more advanced options that are available uh, when I'm doing the zone configuration, which is, again is the configuration that would be blown down to or applied to the access points that are in this particular zone. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just leave this uh, as default for now. Uh, look for another video that will go into the advanced options um, if you're if you're interested in those. So I, I scroll back up. Uh, I've got the, the zone, I've got, again, let me just confirm, I've got the, the information I want, I've got the United States is the country code, I've got the firmware, um, and I've, I'm going to have to go ahead and select here and put in an admin 
and an account basically, and then a password that I want those access points to use. Um, that should be the, the, the end of the information that's actually being configured at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So once I click OK and the wizard's complete, I'll bring me back out to uh, the access points uh, window. If I expand out my HQ domain, I see that I now have my New York City zone. So this is, uh, I've got one zone that will be used for the access points that reside in New York City. Let's say I want to go ahead and create another zone uh, that will be used for the access points that reside in the headquarters uh, in California. So go ahead and click the plus sign once again. I'm going to select zone. And I'm going to put CA zone just as a friendly name. The uh, mainly the options I need to specify are in the general options section. So firmware is the same, United States code is the same. I'm not going to put the location information. I do need to provide an account. Again, that is for uh, the credentials that are going to use for the access points if I wanted to connect to them using a CLI. Uh, the rest of the options, uh, the only thing I need to change here because all we're doing is is really just you know where are these physically located that's the difference between these so i'm going to go ahead and select um, california based time so I'll select los angeles here the rest of the information is going to stay the same uh, we're just using the defaults go ahead and click ok once i come back out I now have two zones uh, that are part of my headquarter domain. Uh, so again, these specifically, uh, the only difference between these two are that they uh, have different time zones that are gonna be configured for the access points. Uh, but beyond that, they're, they're exactly the same. Once I have my zones configured, um, there are some options again, I can edit uh, the particular zone, delete obviously, I can create other zones. Uh, but then I also have uh, more options here. One of them uh, specifically move. Okay, so if I wanted to, if, you, if I if I come back out here, uh, my California New York zones are both located in my headquarter domain. Uh, but let's say I wanted my California zone uh, to be actually uh, a zone underneath the system root domain. Um, what I can do is go ahead and move that. So if I select move. Uh, I go ahead and select system. That's where I want that zone to be actually moved to and click OK. Confirm. Notice now that the California zone uh, it falls under hierarchically underneath the system root. Um, so you're able to move back, back and forth of the, the different zones uh, for whatever makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and move that back. And then if I go ahead and expand <clears throat> and select on a specific zone, I do have other options. So um, some of the other things I can do um, is extract a, a zone template from this particular zone. So if I wanted to use this zone uh, to create a, a template, I could do that using those settings. Um, if I have an, a template that's already been created, I can apply that zone template to the specific zone uh, to where it'll, it'll basically take on the settings of that template. And then I can also change the uh, access point uh, firmware uh, for the access points that are part of this uh, particular zone. So I've got different options on there. So um, again, look for uh, another video that will go into the advanced options when it comes to the zone configuration and also other uh, videos such as creating WLAN uh, configurations uh, and other configurations related to the smart zone.